So it's a great pleasure to uh, reconvene today with uh, scholars from all over the world. Um, and of course, the ostensible purpose today is <clears throat> to, with great pleasure, to announce to you that we're kicking off onboarding for the GRISP Level 1 certification course. Many of you have been selected by WHO uh, for that course. <clears throat> Others have not, but have served in the past as accompanists or have at least completed one scholar course. So I'll have answers to some of the burning questions many of you have asked in relation to that. But I'm eager to um, get started with um, <clears throat> the information. And this is going to be a bit of an information dump. Um, we have a lot to share with you. To give you the information you need to determine if you are ready to commit to service as an accompanist for the CRISP course in English. And if you're a Francophone, we have two courses in French and I'll be telling you about those as well. So let's get uh, started. Here you can see the problem statement for the uh, scholar program where basically, you know, high cost, low volume workshops and trainings do have many sort of does, you can have great value, but uh, their cost and their low volume limit how much they can contribute to country and sub-country uh, capacity strengthening. Um, the overarching goal of the scholar program is um, to find ways to scale peer support uh, in ways that will actually empower countries uh, to progress uh, toward implementation and improvement. Now, the overall ambition of the uh, scholar approach um, is not just about competency development, that's the quadrant in the upper left, but it's also about all of the other quadrants. And we're, it's very early days figuring out how we're going to provide, and we'll figure this out with you, the other aspects that we, uh, we're aiming for in this uh, uh, educational uh, initiative. So just as a reminder now, in the context of the scholar courses that you have all experienced, obviously, um, you know about the support system. We try to build and layer as many options for support um, as we can so that everyone can then decide which options are they going to use to actually help them progress through the, uh, uh, through the course all the way to success. Now, accompanists are very much a key part and have become more prominent with each course, as you're going to see, um, of the support system. And they're now really one of the key components uh, of it. Um, the Latin ad um is about breaking bread. So accompanist is not simply a kind of this kind of technical relationship of tutoring or showing someone how to do something. It's about more than that. And that quote is from Paul Farmer. I'll share the article uh, in which he describes his vision for what accompagnement can mean not as practice and as policy. So the definition of accompanist, and I know in the room we have many who have already served as accompanists, but we also have many newcomers who in many cases may have received support from other accompanists. Um, both of those groups may be familiar with what an accompanist is, we do have a very specific, more technical definition that you see here. Now, who are the accompanists? It goes back to the second cohort of the French language GRISP course, SPMVS is the French acronym for GRISP, in March and May 2018. You can see the names here of the individuals who committed at the time, and this is early days again, to actually providing support to uh, their peers. And we saw in that course, the highest completion rate ever achieved in a scholar course with over 90 out of 100 uh, completing the course. In June, 2018, we then had um, 30 uh, survey scholar accompanists, and you can see their names here, and you will recognize many of the names in many cases. Um, accompanists, scholar alumni have committed to more than one course to supporting and have come back to continue to provide support. Um, in between October and December 2018, with the IMA Level 1 certification in data improvement planning and the Survey Scholar course in French, um, we had 100 active accompanists who took part and who contributed to helping scholars succeed, and you can see their names here. 
Um, on the francophone side, we had 72 active accompanists who filed at least one report um, explaining the outcomes, <coughs> excuse me, what they did and what the outcomes were of their support. So this is a lot of people mobilized to help others. Uh, does it actually make a difference? So we've just completed the 2016-2018 impact evaluation of the scholar program. And even though the program did not start with a companist, this is something that was born in the first quarter of 2018 with the uh, SPMVS course, uh, the GRISP course in French. 58% of scholars, because we got a very representative sample and got an incredible response rate from, uh, from all of you, um, have already received support of an accompanist. And not, not only did you find this support very helpful, but the more, even more interesting correlation is that um, respondents who receive support of an accompanist made better use and application of the courses that they were involved in. So if they were GRISP participants and they developed an activity plan for routine immunization, they're actually more likely to have progressed it toward implementation if they benefited from the support of an accompanist than if they did not. So that is the kind of difference that you as an accompanist are in a position to make if you have the commitment, the willingness, and the uh, energy uh, to, to do so. And really what I want to give to you in this meeting is the information you need to make that decision, which is not an inconsequential one. Um, Nicolas Perrault, yes, this is a recurring question. The short answer is, uh, is yes. And I'll be explaining to you and um, individuals who attend today's meeting and only those will be receiving the invitation to uh, complete their application uh, and basically be accepted into the course as an accompanist and learner. There are some conditions to that, which I will be uh, addressing later. So just to recap, we have the following courses kicking off in March. We have the GRISP Level 1 certification, and this is actually the very first scholar course that we did as a pilot in 2016. And um, you can see here, it is starting today. So last night, um, all of these scholars involved, selected by WHO, received their onboarding instructions, and the course will go through till the 10th of May. Uh, the French course is starting two weeks later. The IMA courses, if you remember, the French was only one week after the English, and that proved to be a kind of an issue in some in in some uh, in some cases. Um, I just realized my caller was not properly set, um, and I do have the webcam turned on. So um, there is also parallel to that. If you are francophone, we're likely to ask you to focus on supporting the courses in French. So there's the GRISP SPMBS course in French and um, Survey Scholar Module A2. Now, um, what does it look like? Again, we were overwhelmed by the number of applicants with over 1,000 for the GRISP Level 1. And of those, WHO decided to accept 414 of them. So again, where in the past, the GRISP courses have had less than 100 participants each time, this is the first time that we're going to have such a large cohort working on improving routine immunization. On the French francophone side, we had over 1,300 applicants, and of those, WHO has selected 446. Now, what does the mobilization look like on the side of the accompanists? We had 171 scholar alumni, including both those who have served, who are experienced accompanists in many cases, and those uh, who are expressed an interest in doing so for the first time. Um, we had 171 people uh, express interest. Now, let me be clear that a being an accompanist is not a state of being, actually it's a state of activity. So for example, the people who attend this session today are the ones who will receive the invitation to complete the accompanist profile in order to serve as an accompanist. Those who do not attend today will not receive this invitation, or if they do so, they will be asked to first show that you know, they had a legitimate reason for missing this session and have watched the entire uh, session. 
Now, this is not a catch-up task as we do for a course requirement, but we want to make sure people understand what it means and the commitment that they're making if they are ready to, to, uh, to make it. Now, on the French-speaking side, we had almost 250 people express interest in serving as a company. So this is quite remarkable. You can think of these numbers where um, even in the fall of 2018, we had you know, at most 100 accompanists, and here we're almost doubling these numbers um, with the number of people who express interest. We shall see how many actually follow through and you know, uh, attend today's briefing and follow through, complete their profile, and follow through to actually responding to the first request and call for support. Now, um, your questions for let's say accompanists, I'll be asking some of the experienced accompanists in the room to, um, to answer a few questions and to share their experience. But I first and foremost have these, the, for these questions uh, for those of you who have not served as accompanists and are considering doing so. So these are the questions to think about. Yes. Um, do you feel ready to help others in using Scholar? That's yes, a very important question. If you do not, you then consider, will you have the time to invest, to get to train to a level where you will be able to help others? Second, do you feel ready to support someone else you know, who may be halfway around the world who is also a learner? Are you ready to set clear limits to your support? You know, if you have constraints on your time, you know, uh, this can be very demanding. Some scholars need a lot of help. So are you, do you feel comfortable setting limits about what, to what extent you're able to provide support? Are you ready to report every time you do something that is significant as an accompanist? There are some, there are forms that you need to fill out, so you need to make sure that you're comfortable doing so and um, that you are diligent and disciplined in doing so. If you do not report on your activities, your activity may, will not be counted and you will no longer be considered an active uh, accompanist. As I say, it is based on activity. It is not a status or a role. It is by doing that you stay, you become, and you remain an accompanist. Do you feel ready to complete training, which we'll be offering during these weekly meetings and possibly at other times, to develop your mentoring and tutoring skills? We know many of you have a lot of tutoring and mentoring skills, but there are specific things you need to know and be able to do when doing it online at a distance. And you can see the other, yes, um, the, the other requirements or questions here. Last but not least, do you feel ready to participate as an exemplary learner in the course? And that's related to, um, uh, to Nicola's uh, question. So four questions for experienced accompanists. And I think I will ask you here to raise your hand if you feel ready to address uh, some of these. All right. And... Uh, Yes, to respond to Afaf Mohammed, who asked, can you be a companist and a participant in the course? The answer, the short answer is yes. And I'll be uh, explaining what some of the constraints on that are. All right, let's uh, bring in Maman Aliou Nauzo, who is the first to raise his hand. So let's bring you over into the panel. All right, and uh, okay, I'm getting notifications, which I actually don't want. Uh, all right. So, Maman, I'm unmuting you. Hello, Rada. Would love to hear from you. Hello. Yes. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Hello. Can you hear me, Rada? And yeah, thank you for giving me. Okay, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, the first question says, what was the best part of your experience as an accompanist? Actually, uh, um, course during which I was able to help one of my <coughs> scholar. She was actually disturbed that she wasn't, uh, and I actually encouraged her. We discussed uh, Sorry, it looks like you were unmuted. I've just, uh, it looks like you were muted. I've unmuted you. Maman, 
Looks like you are muted again. I don't know what's happening. Yeah. All right, let me try one more time to unmute. Oops. Wait, so, keep skipping around. Yeah. Are you getting me, Reda? Yes. Is this Jacob? This is Jacob. Okay, we lost my man. Um, it sounded it was telling, sharing very interesting uh, uh, testimony. But Jacob, please go ahead. Yeah, Hello. Reda, uh, I'm very pleased to share with you uh, one experience that I have with one scholar. And uh, that scholar was totally lost and um, was like um, had missing a lot of assignment and was thinking how oh, it was done and then uh, uh, he would not be able to continue. And I had to discuss with him and show him how to go into scholar and how to see the assignment and uh, how to do them and uh, First of all, I show him and then, then he started doing this and then I explained to him that after those assignments, we are heading to something very, very important and the most important thing, this is the, the, the creator project. And I explained to him how to prepare it and how to handle it. And finally, he did it and he completed the course and I was very, very happy about that. Yeah. Right. I've been calling right. him, sharing with him, uh, calling him normal phone, WhatsApp calls, and pushing him. And after that, we continue discussing about uh, how to implement his project. And uh, actually, he did quite uh, quite a number of things about his. And uh, I was very happy about that. Thank you very much, uh, Jacob. So this is an example. This is a good example of what a difference uh, an accompanist uh, can can uh, can make in terms of helping a fellow colleague uh, uh, succeed. Let's go to um, let's see. Let's go to uh, Chukuma. Or I think Mm Iwara. Let's go to Mm Iwara. I'm trying to unmute you. Yes, Mm Iwara. Are you able to speak to us? And if so, welcome and, and hello. Okay, MM does not seem to be able to speak to us. Let's go to Chukuma then. Chukuma, hello. All right, I'm changing a, a setting. Just okay, we don't seem to be able to hear Chukuma, or at least I cannot. All right, so let's go to Gift. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Hello, Gift. Hello. Hello, Reda. Yes. Okay. Um, I can hear you from here. So, okay. So, Gift, we just got Chukuma again. So, let's hear from Chukuma and then we'll hear from you, Gift. Chukuma, please go ahead. Hello, Reda. Yes, please can go ahead. Now? Yes, loud and clear. All right. Thank you very much. This is a very good opportunity for me to share um, my experience as, as an accompanist. Uh, one of the uh, scholars that I helped, actually he's doing well, but at a point he, he got um, his orientation messed up and doesn't know what the next step was going to be. And he was stuck at that point. And, um, I think you're almost giving up from the whole course. That was the, the onboarding process. So when I was linked up with him, uh, we need to went through it one by one and we got to the stage where he was confused and we were able to uh, sort out the, the way to go on that and he was able to successfully onboard and prepare the course. So it was it was very good experience for me seeing that I made a difference between deciding to drop from the course and continue from the course. And it was, it was just being present, being there to 
guides okay this is what you need to do this is what you need to click and then if you this is how you need to see in there and was yes it took some time to get identified was but i was sure that it was this best way and was a a life-changing experience but i didn't know at this point that he was able to do for the course because i i got busy and i couldn't uh, continue chatting up with him time but it was a nice experience able to have some achieve his check he applied like all scholars he was accepted he was a certain body but had she on the way which who have stopped him from continuing with the rate of people to say, okay, uh, assignment or task that looks so big. This is simple understanding that I'm going to it. And it's actually move further. Um, Chukuma, I don't know if this is the case for other people. I'm having trouble hearing you properly. It might be my connection. Yeah, can other people um, respond in the chat? Let me know if, uh, if I'm the only one having this problem. But we got, at least I was still able to get the uh, gist of it. Is anybody able to uh, say in the chat? But I, okay, same, good night here. The sound is breaking. Okay, thank you, Chukuma, uh, for uh, for sharing. Um, let's now go to hear from Gift, Etten to Gift, uh, welcome. And um, yes, uh, what would you like to share with, so keep it, especially for the new accompanists who may have benefited from the support you know, uh, of, of uh, companies, but who are now expressing an interest in doing it for the first time. Gift, are you able to speak? You were a minute ago. Okay, sorry. I just had one uh, call for, to my phone. Good afternoon. Everybody now, Steve. What is the problem? I don't like when I hello. Yes, it, we're having hello, trouble you hearing hear, you. Gift, you hear yes. now? maybe it, it might be a problem with the internet connection for folks in Nigeria. So, I suggest we go uh, to hello. Sorry, sorry, can you hear me right now? Yes, now I can. Okay, sorry for that breaking transmission. Um. I want to say good afternoon to everybody is, uh, in the room. I want to share my experience. You say, what's, what's the best part of your experience as a publisher's scholar? Well, um, being an accomplice is like um, supporting every other person to be at the same pace with you, knowing that and not everybody will be on the same pace at the same time. And so, um, volunteering to support the other person that may not be at the same pace is like you also learning in the process and um, building the capacity of others to be able to uh, navigate the scholar platform and also be at the same page with everybody. And so I just want to share my little experience that I had during the scholar program. The, the scholar I was assigned to to support Actually, the person was already missing out, just saying to herself, I can't continue. But with uh, my support to her, she was able to follow through the, the scholar course, and now she has gotten her certification. And so uh, one thing is so, is so sure is that um, even though you are a learner and also an accomplice, it doesn't... Um, stop there, as I have said before, that there are people that they are not in the same page with you that needed to be carried along. And so and when you are carrying them along, you're also learning the process. So with the experience I've had in scholar program, I, it, didn't, it didn't stop just to support the, uh, the learners, the new timers, but also to give support to my country Nigeria to be able to uh, move forward, move a step forward more than just learning, but actually put into practice what we have learned in this in using the the scholar 
a platform using the knowledge we have gained so far. And so this is what I want to say. Making, an, making being an accomplice actually makes a difference because we, there's other training that we'll be receiving that will help us to deliver on what we have been taught. So thank you very much, Reda, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, everyone in the house. Great, thank you, Gift. So I'm just thinking aloud with a number of um, people who have expressed interest. We'll see how many follow through, we hope many. Um, and the number of also of experienced accompanists. Uh, you've heard some, some of their um, you know, uh, testimonies and I know there are many more people lining up. Uh, maybe the numbers will be sufficient that we can do a remote coffee where we would match an experienced accompanist with someone who's going to be doing it for the first time. That we might try something like that. Um, if uh, Let me know in the chat if you think that's a good idea because then you would get the benefit beyond what we're able to do in this one hour session, which is uh, actually very short and I also hear that there's a need and that some of you would like more time to be able to share with each other beyond what we can do in a formal session like this one so maybe that could be a good way to um, uh, to do it there is a lot to get through today again the purpose is to give you hopefully what you need to know to determine if you are ready willing and able to serve as an accompanist uh, in the courses we are kicking off today. So this is not hypothetical. Uh, the GRISP level one certification in English, people have started onboarding today. So some of them are going to need help and support and uh, you are in a position to really make a difference uh, for them. So um, here's some principles of accompaniment. And the first, and I put this slide first just because so many of you have asked uh, this question, and that is, can you both be both learner and accompanist? So we've asked the experienced accompanist to share their experience so far in the questionnaire. And we know we have over 60 responses already. And uh, basically the consensus seems to be that serving as both accompanist and learner is actually a productive and useful experience. It's tougher in terms of the time commitment required. And uh, this is why we have decided to allow individuals to, to be both participants in the course and the company. So for the GRISP, GRISP course, some of you who are scholar alumni and were therefore invited to today's meeting to determine if you wanted to be, if you were ready to serve as an accompanist, were, have not been accepted by WHO into the GRISP level one course. As I explained, there's so many candidates, they're very good, high quality candidates who, who could not be accepted by WHO. So here is the, the, the offer <laughs> yes, uh, we make, the deal, if you will, is that, um, if you commit to service as an accompanist, then uh, you will be allowed into the course on that basis and will be able to participate. However, uh, the condition is that you participate as an accompanist, which means sub providing support to other scholars on top of your duties as an exemplary learner. So we'll be looking at your performance as an accompanist and we'll include that performance as a criterion for certification. So for anyone uh, who is going to be both a learner and accompanist and who was not, um, you know, actually whether or not you were selected by WHO, you know, uh, serving as an accompanist uh, will be a, a requirement for certification and additional requirements uh, for you to uh, achieve certification as a course participant. Uh, this is simply to ensure that, you know, uh, people understand it's kind of a, a, a more significant commitment and I hope that yes, uh, makes sense to you. Happy to discuss it yes, uh, with any specifics there. Um, now, what are scholars told they can expect from you as an accompanist? So you can see some of the items here. I'm not going to read through all of them. I'll share the slide deck, deck um, afterward. Um, and they can ask you questions they can, um, you know, uh, so accompanists can help scholars better appreciate their strengths and weaknesses, identify problems, work through resolutions, but here are the limits uh, to the support. Um, you are actually where the, yeah. Um, so you are level one accompanists is open to anyone who's made it through at least one scholar course. 
And your job and the limitation is very clear, is support course participants in the use of the Scholar platform, understanding how the course works, what the process is, what the deadlines are, how to submit community assignments, how to work through the creator project process, and how to keep up with course deadlines. You are not being asked to advise people on the substance or the content of their work, their project, or their assignments. And you are explicitly asked to refrain from advising them uh, on such matters, even if you may be qualified to do so. It is not part of your job as a level one accompanist. Um, now, the duties first and foremost is if you are a course participant, we need to see accompanists leading by example. So that means being first to submit uh, weekly assignments on time, as well as creator projects. Uh, that means responding promptly to requests for assistance. Scholars may lag or delay or not respond at all, but we cannot have such behavior from accompanists. You are held to a higher standard. Um, you ask to report each and every time, and this can seem a bit tedious. Many accompanists have this, uh, that sort of fire and spirit and enthusiasm, and here we ask you to fill out a form. But if you don't fill out the form, you will be moved off of the roster of active accompanists. We don't know anything is happening unless you report it. We won't be able to demonstrate the value of your work unless you take time to report it. Um, setting limits to scope of assistance, that's also very important. I've, I've mentioned it. Um, this is saying, I'm here to help you figure out how to make it through the course. I'm not here to help you with your week, finish your week one assignment, and I'm not here to do it for you. Um, another very important responsibility is with respect to the honor code. If you see anything that looks like there might be um, an instance of a scholar copying someone else's work or basically and without giving the original author credit or in any other ways um, you know failing to honor the honor code we need to know that and we expect a companies to help us um, you know, spot any issues in that area uh, last but not least, attending the weekly meetings. Now, it's a little bit looser. We know your time is limited. So if your time is short, we would rather have you spend the limited time that you have supporting a scholar rather than attending the weekly meeting. Hopefully, you would be able to attend both. But if you have to choose, you can get the slide deck, which will contain the update of what you need to do and how, and move on. We want you we know time is the most precious resource and we want you to use that time wisely, which means spending it on uh, providing support to accompanists. Uh, to, I mean, sorry, to scholars. Now, these weekly sessions, this is the accompanist training. We'll be just, uh, uh, focusing on two tracks. One is how you mentor and tutor remotely. And track two, we'll be revising and encouraging you to revise on your own what you need to know to get various tasks completed in Scholar. You cannot help others unless you know yourself as a scholar or an accompanist so wisely pointed out. More about the honor code. Um, this is an explicit reminder of what standard you are uh, held to yourself and what standard you are to hold the scholars you support to. In case of honor code violations, there can be severe con consequences. One is we have a very small number of people, it's less than 10, but who have been removed from the course, who've lost their scholar certification, who are no longer welcome in WHO scholar courses. And in some cases, uh, we have notified the WHO actually has notified the, that person's employer. So th this is why we need your support to make sure that um, this remains a very rare and unlikely occurrence uh, that is stopped immediately. So to go back to the schedule, what do we have before us? We've started on onboarding for GRISP Level 1 English. So Yes, uh, I'll explain the next steps. Those of you who complete your company's profile will be receiving a call, a first call soon to help scholars who are struggling with onboarding. For Francophones, uh, the meeting it will start in 26 minutes. We'll be reviewing pretty much the same information, but um, there will be two courses which require support and they'll be un in onboarding in successive weeks. The first call for assistance, um, this is actually let me change this on the fly. Um, so this, whoops, 
Um, so this should be, so this is GRISP on board. Um, so this is the um, onboarding instructions there. And these are the things that scholars are being asked to do. And they are the things that um, you will be asked to support. Now, if you are a GRISP participant already confirmed by WHO, you've received these instructions, expect to receive a request to support someone who is struggling with these instructions. We do not expect you as a companist to struggle. You have done this before. And if you commit to serving as a companist, we hope that yes, you will be in a support, in a position to help others and not require help, but we're also happy to assist you if you need a refresher on any of these. Now, during onboarding, what can you do as an accompanist? The first line of support is the WhatsApp group for GRISP. So join the group and respond. You know, we have people from all over the world, so we're in a position to provide support at all times of, of the day or night. Um, we're figuring out who by the end of the week has not yet registered in Scholar, you know, who got stuck somewhere or missed the message, or, and then we'll send out a call to a companist matching you with a Scholar who is not fully on board yet. Um, now, you should be self-sufficient. You should be able to, um, oh, I see so Catherine Muyawala can't hear me, but I don't know if there are others. Uh, um, and um, so please let me know if uh, you also cannot hear me. My microphone seems to be fine. Um, now, your second line of support as accompanists is, and we've, this is a change from the way we operated last year. We were completely swamped by emails, which we tried to manage through a help desk that collected emails from all of the uh, course specific addresses. So um, what has changed now is that there's a second line of support, which is a single address support at learning.foundation, which we'll be using for all the courses. And uh, we want you to use that address when you get stuck in the support you're providing. You're not able to solve the problem for the person you've been asked to support. And second, you can reach out to either or Hannah, who many of you already know, or Polenfo. The big difference is that Hannah and Polenfo are now the support for accompanists. We expect you and invite you to be the frontline support and uh, and only turn to Hannah or Polenfo or to the support uh, email address if you are unable to solve the problem, whatever, whatever problem the scholar is having. Um, last but not least also is this requirement to report on the outcomes. So I hope uh, that makes sense. The 11th of March, um, we'll have the orientation for the GRISP level one English, 18th of March, week one for Survey Scholar module A2, that's in French, yes. Um, and the 25th of March will be orientation for SPMVS and the GRISP in French. So the address is support at learning.foundation. I'm just sharing with all attendees. They'll be sharing, I just need to make a PDF of the slide deck. And then um, if you don't have them already, the WhatsApp numbers for Hannah and Polenfo. Um, so that's orientation. Um, what do we expect you to do during orientation? So uh, Monday the um, 11th, the uh, accompanist weekly meeting will focus on providing the information and training you need for that week for the GRISP course. Um, but just to give you an idea, these are the tasks what we'll be asking you to um, uh, to do orientation has daily activities. So we'll be looking at who doesn't complete their daily activities and we'll be targeting them for support. Um, so just yes, uh, to review, what are your next uh, steps? First of all, um, so this is about, today's meeting is about thinking through, are you ready to make the commitment required to serve as an accompanist? Uh, this should not be taken lightly. There's nothing worse than people who have, who express interest, uh, complete their profile, and um, uh, and then do not actually follow through and ignore the call for support that we sent to them to provide support to a scholar. So think carefully about whether you are in a position to dedicate sufficient time. And I saw a question in the chat, how much time should I... Uh, I can, should I expect to spend? So that's where we want to be as flexible as possible. We recognize that um, some of you, if you can help just one scholar, 
um, that's already wonderful. Others are at the other end of, of the scale and are willing and have in the past demonstrated that they can dedicate several hours each week, um, you know, impressive amounts of time to supporting others. Both kinds of engagements make a difference. Both kinds of engagement are, are, are important. No matter how many hours you are willing to spend, we can make it fit for you. But what we ask is you tell us. You, know, you be explicit. You think through and determine how much time are you able to give, and you set the limits that make sense uh, uh, sense to you. And I see Jaurès, um, we can use this as checklist before taking off for the décollage, uh, which is take off in French for. Um, so I'm very happy to see we've got another 20 minutes to go because I saw I see many of you um, are. Um, uh, raise your hand to share your experience and you'll see that we'll try to the greatest extent possible to do the to do peer training so all of the issues and the skills we're hoping to convey and help you practice and develop and and uh, and get better at um, by serving as an accompanist um, uh, many times we will ask experienced accompanists to share that experience and show and demonstrate and give examples and give very concrete cases of how uh, they were able to do or achieve a particular outcome or provide a particular kind of support. Um, and that is really how these sessions uh, work. So I would like to go to Michael um, Victor, just to make sure that Michael, you have actually uh, uh, understood the, um, so let me bring you into the panel as well. And then we'll be going back to some of the folks who raised their hands earlier. Um, but Michael asked a question. I was rejected from the GRISP course, but I really need to participate as a companist and scholar too. Please, I need your help. Uh, so Michael, I'm trying to bring you in to the panel. And have I been able to do it? Yes, okay. So uh, Michael, are you able to speak to us today? Michael, no, I'm not at least not able to hear you. Michael, can you turn your microphone on? We'd love to hear from you. You said you uh, really need to participate as a companist and scholar too. So I, I would love to hear what you, uh, Michael? Hello? Yes, Michael, how are you doing? I'm fine, how are you? Great, <laughs> all right. So tell us, um, Obviously, serving as a companist and scholar means more work. Can you introduce yourself and tell us what is your motivation for uh, the GRISP course and for serving as an accompanist? Yeah, my name is Michael Victor, and here I'm um, district vaccination and uh, vaccination officer Ilala Dar es Salaam. Last time I was participating in the last course of EMA level one. Hello. Yes, Hello. we hear you. Go ahead. The last course it was uh, in level one, and I was uh, really participating fully. I was uh, getting the, the certificate, but this time I really wanted to participate as a, a companist. I wanted to help other people who would have not really know the scholar of WHO. Hello. Yes, and and oh, yes, funny. and so you finished. You completed the IMA course. What is? How are you involved with routine immunization planning, which is the topic of the GRISP course? Hello. Hello. Yes, we we hear you, Michael. But I'm asking, how are you involved in your country in routine immunization planning? Okay, it sounds like Michael is no longer able to uh, uh, to hear me. All right. Okay, and Jaurès says, yes, we hear you. Um, yes, so for Uzodinma Adirieje, uh, yes, uh, you'll be, uh, all of the attendees uh, of today's session will be receiving a follow-up email 
and it will contain instructions to complete your company's profile. It will contain the you'll receive the company's guidelines, and then you'll be able to to uh, complete onboarding for the uh, for the course. And of course, we'll be asking you to commit to commit to the weekly meetings and the, and training. So that will be in the follow up email addressed only to those of you who uh, attended today's session. Um, all right, let's go to, uh, let's try Alex Mutale. I think he was having tr trouble also. Uh, Alex, good afternoon. Are you able to speak to us, Alex? Okay, no, uh, all right. Uh, all right, so let's uh, go to Clement. Clement Avoca, Clement Avoca. Can you yeah. hear us? Can you speak? Yeah, to I can hear you. Yeah. Good afternoon, yes, great. And the team. And thank great. you very much for this opportunity. And for me, um, receiving help from a colleague is very, very important as far as completing a tax is concerned. Uh, my first time in the immunization data improvement class. And I benefited from the help of an accompanist, one Emmanuel Safi. I actually had difficulty uploading my assignments, especially when it comes to graphs or charts, <coughs> figures and those things. And so I nearly, of course, dropped out from the program because I was not um, getting the motivation to carry on, even though I can work perfectly on my assignment and how to uh, upload it to the system was a challenge. And so um, uh, this company was of very, you know, good help to me. And so I want to stand on that motivation and also extend my help to other newly scholars who may be facing similar problems as I did one program in data improvement. And so I think that with my experience in that program, I should be able to assist my colleagues who may also be facing similar challenges uh, in this program. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you indeed, uh, uh, Clement. Uh, and I hope that's that's the spirit of the, <laughs> yes, uh, and the culture that we are forging together uh, and that you are really leading by example as a companist. Um, all right, let's go to uh, Patience. Adeta maybe had a question because she just raised her hand. Uh, Patience, how are you? Are you able to uh, hear me and speak to us? Okay, Patience does not seem to be uh, ready, but uh, Alex has just indicated. Uh, Alex, please go ahead. Alex Mutale, are you able to speak to us? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, all right. We've had more success with uh, microphones uh, in the past. <laughs> yes, uh, and um, yes. Yeah, so, um, so the follow-up email will go to the uh, participants who attended the full session, and with the. Um, Yes, so with a link to the uh, to complete your company's profile, and even if you are an experienced accompanist, we're going to ask you to um, complete the profile again. Maybe update your information. Uh, make sure you use the same name that you use in Scholar, not some variant on the name. Make sure you use the same email. All of those things uh, matter. Now, uh, accompanist levels. Um, everyone in the GRISP course it will basically be a level one. We're thinking about how to, and I had an interesting discussion about this with uh, Alain Blestatsinku, um, and we've discussed this with, uh, with other companies, um, how to recognize the growing uh, experience of some of you who have been here every course, who have committed and who have delivered results and made a difference and helped scholars succeed in every course. Um, so we want to recognize that um, we've struggled with, we promised some form of certification. We have yet to deliver on that, but we are accountable to you as uh, accompanists. And we're really trying to think through what is going to be the most meaningful credential. How do we let, for example, country, WHO country offices or, um, or UNICEF country offices or the EPI team know that they are, are there are staff or there are individuals 
who are especially committed and who are making a difference in terms of capacity strengthening. So that um, that we we hope uh, when we do deliver on this, it will be worth the wait. Um, all right, Alex, it looks like is not going to be able to uh, speak uh, to us. Hello. Alex? Loretta, are you able to get me? Yes, yes, L loud and clear, a little uh, low on the volume if you can speak up, but please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you very much. As you have indicated, I'm Alex Zitari from Zambia. Of course, I'll, get, I'll give my line of uh, experience as a scholar. Uh, basically, what has been so uh, encouraging to me in as far as the receipt training is concerned, uh, it has been a, 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 an experience where my approach to immunization uh, activities has completely improved in as far as uh, uh, strategies for now to reach out to hard to reach areas. And so when we, we were doing uh, immunization activities previously, that is before the receipt training, and this time around, we we have realized that uh, after using the concepts and the or what was uh, uh, learned in, during our our training, uh, we've been able to reach out to many, and the coverage rates have uh, improved tremendously. So. I would just put it that uh, my experience, uh, my experience rather, has been very uh, tremendous in as far as improvement of my uh, working is concerned. Mm -hmm. I think so far that is what I can say on uh, the uh, issue of uh, my experience. Thank you, Alex. And I believe you are you were a member of the first uh, GRIS pilot in 2016, developed an activity plan, and then progressed, used it to progress um in in your work if i understand correctly you consider it's made a significant difference and uh, this is now showing in terms of improved coverage uh, can you remind us where you're based and where you work um come again uh, can you remind us where where you are based which country um and uh, where you work i'm based in, in zambia and I'm working with an organization called Alejo Community Support Project. And currently we've been uh, able to receive uh, support from Gavi, where we are working in the uh, Muchinga province in uh, three districts. And these are hard to reach districts because they are new districts. So these are districts which we are recording zero coverage uh, rates in, term, in terms of child health immunization. But this time around, just as at January, we've seen is a very big change. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Alex. Very important uh, uh, testimony, I believe. Um, let me see. We have not heard, and I see that the, um, yes, uh, we have not heard from colleagues who are based in Asian countries. I do see one of the, our one of the most committed, engaged, <laughs> yes, uh, diligent um, scholars, alumni, and accompanists is uh, Mohammed Imran Qureshi. He is one of many <laughs> who are, are exceptionally engaged, uh, but he uh, happens to be based in Kashmir, in Pakistan. So, Mohammed, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, uh, especially thinking, keeping in mind the new um, new scholars who are committing. Uh, to uh, service as a companist. Uh, what is your experience and what would be your advice to them? Uh, thank you very much, Reda. And uh, I hope you can listen me clearly. And uh, welcome everybody in uh, different parts of the world. Very much excited to join yet another exciting course. I use the term uh, high class international forum to learn uh, with the diligent and uh, talented scholars all around the world with such a talented uh, course team, which is always there to, to share uh, the experience of others and to, to share the high class knowledge and skills and experience uh, every time. So uh, my experience uh, as a scholar and as well as, as an accompanist, so uh, I have a lot of uh, good experiences related to the self-learning 
in this uh, scholar in these scholar courses so uh, obviously uh, i mean you are engaged at uh, such a level where your self learning is really important for a person like me who is engaged at the provincial level in pakistan so in planning phase and in obviously implementation phase you you have to keep uh, many points in your mind and going through such scholar courses is always uh, really helpful so i have noticed a clear cut difference in my approach once i was uh, i has not finished any scholar course and once i have finished and not just the module a1 a2 a3 service scholar courses but also the ima level 1 course so there is a clear cut difference in my approach in in contributing towards the improvement of immunization services in the province and uh, apart from that I mean uh, uh, let's discuss something about the companies so frankly speaking i have worked as an accompanist uh, in module a, a3 service scholar course and then i am a level 1 so my experience was pretty good so frankly speaking i could summarize the, that experience into few points like uh, i always believe that uh, you can better un understand the situation of a scholar who just stuck to accomplish a specific task and could not move forward and need a kind sport a, a, a level sport or uh, you can say a sport from a scholar who can understand the problem in reality at the grassroots level or at the uh, mean initial level and not from the high class uh, uh, people who 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 just uh, give the high class knowledge but at times they uh, they need to 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 just touch out the basics as well so uh, frankly speaking providing such basics to the scholars is really helpful I mean you can you can just guide them the basic steps how to accomplish that task obviously you are not uh, supposed to accomplish that task for that scholar so your active sport would be just to guide and motivate and just to 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 give few important tips how to accomplish that specific task to accomplish uh, in that uh, course i can still recall few of the scholars which uh, i i i sported throughout uh, ima level 1 course and in service scholar courses and frankly speaking i could quote one scholar uh, i was sporting that scholar and frankly speaking i was also in a fix how to sport that scholar because of uh, so many challenges and limitations and problems uh, that was it related that was time difference related that was language related that was understanding related so there were many many problems and issues and challenges but i was happy on one point that uh, i was not ready to give it up and at the same time this scholar was also not ready to give it up so we were together and we 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 followed each other in different times and not just uh, uh, the, the the gentleman finished that specific task but also he he probably finished the rest of the task to gain the certificate and that was really really a credit to me mean a person who want to learn but because of some difficulty some challenge some problem he is unable to accomplish but if you are just sporting in a way that uh, the, the scholar is ready to accomplish the task that is really a good pleasing feeling inside you and and and, and nothing like that I mean if somebody has learned something because of you it means a lot to me frankly speaking and uh, that was just one example but i i i believe there were many examples even some of the scholars uh, wanted sport uh, within the country and i i, I sport so thank you rida for giving me this opportunity i hope we can talk more and more during the course of this uh, course thank you mohammed uh, we have a uh, the meeting for the weekly meeting with the company starts in 2 minutes so i just want to uh, wrap up for now um so look you look for the follow up email um inviting you to complete the company's profile that's really a key step again it's only by completing the profile even if you have done it before we ask that you do it again that will put you back on the active roster of a company that we will be calling on um if you are not uh, if you were not selected by WHO for the grisp uh, english course you'll be receiving a separate message uh, on on the procedure to follow there and a specific requirement that will expect of you um 
And then um, what you see on screen is a sneak preview. You are the very first outside of WHO and the scholar team uh, to see this. We're getting ready to announce the level two certification course on reducing inequities and improving coverage. Now, in a way, this is GRISP level two, but uh, you do not need to have finished GRISP level one to take this course. Uh, we'll be um, launching applications this week and they'll be accepted until the 27th of March. So we'll have more time uh, to collect applications. We'll be looking to um, you know, the more experienced scholars and the companists for support on this one. This, um, this course will be the first that will explicitly have a linkage to Gavi TCA funding. So participation developing a high quality project may um, lead to you know, uh, support and access to resources to actually implement that project. That's all I'll say for now. Um, and we're hoping to give you more in these weekly meetings, more access, more say, let's say early access to um, opportunities like this one. We'll definitely share the, um, the, uh, the invitation and the link to the application form as soon as it is ready, we'll be the first to know. So thank you. I'm gonna stop, um, make a kind of abrupt end to the meeting in order to start the uh, fr meeting for the Francophones. Take care, wonderful to see you and uh, look forward to seeing you very soon in Scholar, online, uh, WhatsApp uh, and wherever else you may, you may be, we may find Scholars, bye-bye.